Okay, this is a video about thin converging lenses and how images are formed. Okay, um, thin converging lenses are like the kind of thing you have in your eyeball, um, and they're used in lots and lots of devices like cameras and uh, projectors, all kinds of places, uh, magnifying glasses. Right, uh, we're going to look at how to construct ray diagrams to, to actually explain how um, they form images. All right, so there are two types of lens, and we're only going to be really looking at the convex type of lens. Okay, but if you know something about refraction, you should be able to predict the path of uh, rays of light entering um, and leaving this glass block here, this uh, convex, sorry, uh, concave lens. All right, so rays are coming in; they're striking at a slight angle. The boundary between the air and the glass, they get refracted, and at the second boundary, they get refracted again. And in this case, it bends it out that way. In the center, it's hitting it at 90 degrees. Uh, to the uh, vertical line, and it's not going to be refracted at all. Okay, and finally on, on this side. So this, all the rays diverge outwards. But in the case we're looking at, the in, we're interested in, is a convex lens. This is a convex lens. Okay, uh, it will make all parallel rays of light coming towards it, focusing to one point. The point at which it will focus will be called the focal point, and the distance from the middle of the lens to that point is called the focal distance. Okay? And it's easy to show that by setting a piece of paper on fire. Okay, so if I move the lens closer, or too close, or further away, you can see that the light comes to a point at a certain point. That is now the focal point of the lens. Uh, if I move this hot spot now over to a dark piece of paper, you can see uh, another effect, which is that uh, darker materials absorb thermal energy a lot better than uh, shinier, whiter materials, which reflect the thermal energy, which is a different topic, but still interesting and useful to find out about. Now, from the knowledge that all parallel rays enter, uh, hitting the lens will be focused on one point, we can explain three interesting cases of lenses, which we'll go through now. Is a convex lens all the rays, and if you know something about refraction, you should be able to predict that they will turn inwards and turn inwards again, okay? Refracting twice at the first boundary and at the second boundary, okay? And what you get is a, a focal point where all the rays converge on one point. This is called the focal point. The distance from the center of the lens to the focal point is called the focal length, and it's quite an important um, quite an important number uh, for a lens. It will, tell you, it will help you to be able to predict a lot of things about how they behave and how they form images. Okay, from this point on, when I show refraction happening in the lens, I'm not going to show it happening once at this boundary and once again at this boundary. Just to simplify things, I'm going to have refraction happening once at the central line. This is not actually what happens, but it does make drawing ray diagrams a lot simpler. And um, as long as you're aware that it's just a simplification, then it shouldn't impede your understanding of um, what's going on in lenses. Okay, so there are three cases worth learning about, okay? And uh, I've demonstrated those visually, okay? So case number one is when an object is outside of the focal length, but more than one focal length, twice outside the focal length. So uh, in this diagram here, I have uh, the central line of the lens. The focal length of this lens is about 5 centimeters. So 10 centimeters will be 2 times the focal length, and this object is 2 times the focal length away, more than 2 times the focal length away. <coughs> the second case is when it's a bit closer, but it's not so close that it's, um, it's got to be in between f and 2f. So it's like 7.5 centimeters in this example, okay, from the central line of the lens. And the third case is when the object is very close, and this is like with magnifying glasses, how you use them to, to read newspaper print that's too small. Okay, so let's have a look at case number one. Case number one applies to uh, the way you're watching this video right now. Uh, the way an image forms on the back of your eye on your retina uh, is exactly like the case we're going to look at now. So, right, so if we look at the objects we're going to be forming an image of, that's outside the window. Okay, so all of these objects when I've got my lens set up, are going to be a long way away from the lens. They're going to be more than two times the focal length or the focal distance. Okay? 
just come back on this. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is going to be my screen. Here's the lens. If I get the lens and I set it up so that I just get it to the right point, I can shoot up get quite a crisp, clean image of the outside world. Is that clear? Okay, that's case number one. So, uh, explaining how uh, case one works. The building, which we looked at, was outside of the, uh, further away from the lens, the centre of the lens, by more than 2S. It was a long, long way away, a mu much further than 2S. Okay? If we draw one ray, which is horizontal, and then having it refracted, and as you can see I've simplified it by showing it refracting once in the centre of the lens, uh, it will go through the focal point, as you would expect. All parallel rays will pass through the focal point. There's another thing about lenses that's interesting, is that anything passing through the direct center of the lens will be undeviated, pretty much. Okay? So I can draw another, lens, uh, another ray on uh, that's going straight through the center of this, and something happens, the lines cross. Now where the lines cross, if I was to put a piece of paper here, all the light that's leaving this point is going to be focused and, f and come together at this point. So I'll get a nice bright spot that is that color. If I was to repeat this process for every little spot on this candle, like draw a parallel ray coming from here and put it through the focal point and um, another ray going through the center and not being deviated, I'd find that they would cross about here. And if I did the same for the middle of it, they'd cross about here. And what you'd find is all the light that's coming off here will all come to focus at this point here. You get an upside down image, right? that is inverted, that means upside down, it's diminished, which means it's smaller, and it's real. What does that mean? What we mean is it's real because it's made from real rays. These are rays, the light is actually doing this. Yeah? Um, the light is actually taking this path and coming to a focus at this point here. So that makes the image real. Okay? <coughs> right, second case. Okay, so case number two, this time we're going to use this bulb as our object and um, it's going to be forming an image again on a piece of paper if I get it just right get the paper in the right position right now I think you can see that we have an image of the bulb and the bulb is actually upside down compared to how it was before it's been inverted um, and it's a lot larger than uh, than the actual bulb that we're looking at just look back at the bulb okay so this is a setup where the lens and the object are quite close together. It's about uh, one and a half times the focal length away from the... The object is about one and a half times the focal length away from the lens. Okay? Okay, second case. Second case, the object is between f and 2f. Right, so if we said f on this lens was 5 centimeters, the focal length, sorry, then this would maybe be at 7.5 centimeters. We follow the rules again. We draw one parallel ray coming off it and being refracted through the focal point and we draw one ray going through the center of the lens this time we find they cross much much further away okay this means that our object so our image formed is going to be much larger okay it's mag it's bigger it's magnified uh, it's still upside down and it's also a real image because it's formed from real rays well, these aren't uh, these rays actually do this they don't um, they actually travel this path. Okay. <coughs> right, final case. When the object is very close to the lens. Okay, so case number three is when the object is much closer to the lens. It's actually inside the focal length or the focal distance. Okay, so if we look at this, the object is this piece of paper or this page, and the image, we're on the other side of it now and we're seeing the image here. This is actually a case where you have a virtual image. It's larger. Uh, it's not inverted, and um, it's uh, not a real image, which I'll explain all in the later part of the video. Right, final case. When the object is very close to the lens, follow the rules again. Draw one horizontal ray, another ray going through the center of the lens undeviated. This time they don't cross. Is that a problem? Not really, okay? Because, as you saw in the um, example, you will be looking at the object from this side. Now, to your eye, it appears as this ray and this ray, it appears to you as though those rays came from a point behind 
um, what you're actually looking at, but much, much larger. Okay, it will make the object look much, 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 much larger. Okay, in this case, the object has formed an image, and this is the image that is upright. It's not been inverted. It's magnified, and this time it's a virtual image because it is made by drawing virtual rays. These dotted lines, there aren't really light rays coming from there, okay? They just appear to be coming from there, so that's why we call it a virtual image. Okay, so let's look at the, the rules for drawing these kind of diagrams. Step one, you have to draw the lens, the objects, and the focal points. Okay? So here we have the lens, the object, and the focal points. Okay. The next step is to draw a parallel ray of light refracted through the focal point. So you just draw a ray of light that is parallel to this central line. Okay. I'll just put in the uh, the center of the lens there, um, and it is refracted through the focal point. Step three: you must draw a ray that passes through the center of the lens and is undeviated. Okay. Where the lines cross is where you've put your ob uh, your image sorry okay all right so um it's really important that you don't try and memorize what these images what these pictures look like you won't be able to remember how it how to draw it you have to follow the steps you have to do it step by step the idea is that you're predicting what's going to happen by using the rules of um the rules you've discovered about how lenses work that parallel rays will always go through the focal point, refracted and turned through the focal point, and that um, rays going through the center of the lens will be undeviated. And if you follow those rules, you'll be able to work out where the rays cross and the size of the object. Okay? All right, thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful.